Good morning. I'm a priest working in the local Anglican church, about 15 kilometers inland from here, called St. John the Baptist Pine Town. It's a semi-urban parish. I also have responsibility for four congregations in, in a rural area known as the Valley of a Thousand Hills. These members are people with a low carbon footprint. In some of these congregation, congregations, no one gets to church by a car. They walk. Some of them live in shacks, and often they rely on their own vegetable gardening to feed themselves and their families. And the recent torrential rains that we've been experiencing in this province have a very uh, negative effect on them. They are the ones who will certainly need help in adapting to the devastating effects of climate change. When I think of them, I think of the environment minister from the small Pacific island of Tuvalu. He spoke in the plenary se session on Wednesday afternoon, and his short input was one of the highlights for me of this COP17. He said that just as he left his country to come here, a state of emergency had been declared by the government there. They were experiencing their worst drought in history. They had to start importing fresh water and desalination equipment. And he said they were um, possibly going to be erased as a sovereign state. So he was obviously supporting a second commitment uh, for the Kyoto Protocol, and he was stressing the urgency of uh, decisions being made on climate now. He said, we are only a few inches from a point of no return. We want to tell our children that Durban saved Tuvalu. So as we are in this last day of COP, I want to appeal to those making the final decisions to, to work and decide for the common good, and particularly for the benefit of those most vulnerable on our planet, most vulnerable to the effects of climate change. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew.